Good to see you. Everyone is here at PIMC's morning Sangha sit. I don't suppose, why don't you wave madly if you're, oh, but there's a lot of people without their cameras on. Okay. Wave if you are new or if you can get to your chat and you aren't just doing this on your phone. Uh, if you can get to your chat, tell me that you are new here. Okay, LP, good. You raised your hand, fantastic. Anyone else? Birch, okay, good. This will help me determine how much to say and how much not to say. Although if you know me, you might know that I'm a little too verbose sometimes. Well, let us just start by beginning to find a comfortable position and settle into what I like to call the seat of nobility. I'm Candle Summers. I am um, offering my spiritual friendship at PIMC on the first and third Sundays of the month and on Several Fridays, I have a couple of women's groups that are going, and I do a couple of other alternative uh, venues. Uh, one of them is the same one that Jim is at sometimes, the Multnomah Neighborhood House, and those are available to be attended to, even though it's not through PIMC. So if anybody would like to have more of my opportunities of sitting. I'll put later in the chat my um, email address. Elisa, out of town. Did Robert mention if the class would be held tonight while he is in retreat? I suspect not. Do you have any idea, Jim? It's not. Yeah. Thanks, Tim. And maybe just to get excessive business out of the way, uh, I'll say a little bit about what else is going on at PIMC here at the, here at the beginning. Um, I think probably one of the... Mm, most fun things is that Jim is doing a Qigong half day on Saturday, which is Juneteenth. Um, a few of us have signed up also for a, a, a special Zoom meeting celebrating Juneteenth. I think Robert's actually going to it. Um, I'll put something about it in the PIMC connections if anybody is interested because it's on Saturday for a couple of hours. Um, we have Gregory Malouf on Wednesday evenings. We have Doug on Thursday evening, Doug Pullen, whom you met yesterday. We have Doyle on Friday at lunchtime. Dhamma, which I think is at 11.30 on Facebook Live and on Zoom. So the best way to access most of this is to go to the website and find the one that says online offerings, which is over on the left, or scroll through the Google Events calendar. Is there anything uh, that you can think of, Jim, that is other than our usual almost everyday offerings, for which I am extremely grateful. The uh, uh, webinar you were talking about for Saturday is not on the Portland no. Insight uh, website. So you no. have to go to uh, LA Insight, is that? It's, it's at LA Insight and um, I can put it in connections. If anyone doesn't get connections, you might like it, it's the email list serve that has a couple of hundred people on it uh, who talk to each other about various things and 
announce from time to time interesting offerings other than what is at PIMC. So thank you for listening to my voice. If you were just sitting nice and quietly with your eyes closed, you could have been attending to it with awareness, or you might have been just letting it be sound flowing to your ears. You may have noticed it as pleasant or unpleasant or neutral. All of those things that we do while employing mindfulness and awareness in our daily life. But now I'll officially start by ringing the bell. And just allow these sounds to come gently to the ears. Sensation, vibration arriving to the sense door of the ear. This meeting is being recorded. Okay. It is such an honor for us to take this time together to settle the body, to calm the mind, to watch with interest what happens at all of the sense doors. And we have extreme gratitude to the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha for having this opportunity. Just the very ability to be born human in a time period when we can hear the Buddha's teachings is a great boon. And to have Sangha together to practice is an honor never to be taken for granted. And I hope you can hear my voice because I tend to go all over the map. Sometimes I'm extremely projecting with my voice and sometimes it gets a little low, but I'm hoping this is all right. So we have the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha. We take refuge in the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha. I think I will just chant the shortened Pali version since I don't have my guitar nearby, nor Robert's voice. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa budang saranam gachami danang saranam gachami sangang saranam gachami dutiampi budang saranam gachami dutiampi Danang saranam gachami, dutiam pi sangang saranam gachami, tatiam pi budang saranam gachami, tatiam pi danang saranam gachami, tatiam pi sangang saranam gachami. saying that chant or singing it the way you know it in your mind can bring us into a container, a container that we share with each other as well as the container of our own bodies that is supported by Sangha from generation to generation. 
the words being heard, memorized, written down, translated in many, many different styles, many countries. There are so many ways to hear and learn the Dhamma and great appreciation to the Dhamma, the teachings themselves and the truth, the truth of the, the nature, our nature of reality, our conditioned reality and the reality of the unconditioned. And to the enlightened one, to the Buddha, this particular Buddha, Shakyamana Buddha, there were others before him. And so we sit in a large field. We have a lot of support for whatever ups and downs we go through during our sitting period. We can always reflect on the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha. We take this time gathering our attention into our bodies, coming to our senses, settling, relaxing, staying alert yet upright. You can take a moment to notice if there's tensions in the body and just do a brief scan, relaxing behind the eyes, at the temples, softening the tissue behind the eyes. Relaxing around the lips, the corners of the mouth, the tongue, the jaw. And allowing that sense of ease or noticing if there is one to flow through the throat. Around the jaw releasing and relaxing as we sit and just pay attention. We might at first notice what's happening at the ear door. There may be sounds in our household or sounds outside our windows. We can gently be aware that sound is arriving to the ears. without grasping it, identifying it. We just let it be pure sensation arriving at the ears. and each of the other senses touching at the eyelids, the lips, where the hands might be settling. The buttocks on the cushion. Feeling gravity, letting ourselves be grounded into the body. holding this container of our body as an anchor to return to when we find ourselves lost in thought or attending to something in the body that may carry us away for a while. We can always return to a touch point of the sits bones on the cushion or the feet on the floor, feeling pressure under one foot and under the other. And we can also use the breath in the Anapana Sati Sutta and also in the Satipatthana Sutta 
the first teachings of the Buddha, the breath can be felt, known. We can know whether it's a long breath or a short breath when we're breathing in. Or we can know if it's a long breath or a short breath breathing out. And that can help us focus the mind, bringing attention to a single object of the breath or the sits point. It can help still the body also and calm the mind without us trying hard. We can stay relaxed, natural, just enough effort to keep interest and awareness in what's happening in the present moment. Seeing clearly what's happening. We try not to put a story line around what's happening. It's helpful to just notice pure sensation arriving at the any of the sense doors of hearing, tasting, touching, seeing, smelling and the thought door. And in the beginning, it's a little personal effort that's sometimes on and sometimes off and we can just persevere. We remember and we keep going. We forget, we remember, we keep going. And sometimes when the momentum build up, builds up, we can start to notice that awareness just kicks in on its own. There's a flow that can come. Awareness is there with mindfulness. Mindfulness is present in a neutral way, seeing what's arising, perhaps noticing the characteristics of anicca, anatta, and dukkha, Whatever arising is impermanent, and so that can sometimes be disappointing or unsatisfactory. Dukkha, the nature of conditioned, conditioned things. We may notice that it lasts for a certain amount of time and then passes away. We can't hold on to it. The three characteristics of anicca, anatta, and dukkha are often seen when we settle down, open our field of awareness to see what arises at any of the sense doors. And if that gets a little too confusing or seems too spacious and wide open, we can just go back to the breath feeling it at a very specific point at the nostrils or at the diaphragm. We can be back to sensation, noticing if it's warm or cool, rough or smooth. Heavy or light. And so we have this continuity, or at least the intention of the continuity of mindfulness. And it's not about using a lot of effort, but it's about being steady, 
steady and keep going. Noticing what's in the present moment, that it arises and passes. We may notice one of those points when it's arising or when it's passing. It's a moment of wakefulness when we notice, ah, this is passing away. Something else is arising. We're looking at what is and using investigation and wisdom to understand it. We come into intimate contact with it, staying grounded in our container of the body. It's a simple understanding of what it's really like to live life as a human being. And we take the time to nurture a quiet and dedicated meditative mind so that we can penetrate in, into the difficulties that we might create in our lives and find true understanding. Realizing the transient nature, how suffering can arise and pass away. We can cling to things and push things away, but there is a path to freedom. There's a joy that can come from recognizing this wisdom as we're sitting, as we create just enough interest and understanding that motivates us to be quiet and present to reveal more. And this can allow us to look deeper into how we experience life and our relationship to the world around us. One breath at a time. One mindful moment at a time.
And we remember as we're sitting here with mindfulness of the floor and awareness present to hold ourselves gently and with compassion. If we notice our mind has wandered off, we just gently come back to the breath or the sit point or the container of the body. Noticing that moment of awakeness when we've returned to the present moment. And it's that awareness that grounds us and allows these wholesome mind states to arise together with awareness, that of loving kindness for ourselves. And when we have awareness, we have the opportunity to learn and allow the wisdom aspect of our mind to flourish. Wisdom is that which sees clearly. And with the addition of awareness, we can have a kind of confidence and a motivation to keep exploring and moving into the unknown regions of our minds. And when our heart and mind is balanced and strong, awareness becomes natural. Wisdom's always available and very little effort is required for it to arise. Easeful, natural, relaxed, being present. And as this observing mind gets stronger, wisdom can deal more easily with defilements of greed, anger, or delusion that might arise in the mind. They can be seen clearly, that they arise and pass away. Not me, not mine, not about me.
And so we can see the activities of the mind with fresh eyes, bringing in wisdom of our beginner's mind, curiosity, asking how to be more open in the moment, not assuming that the experiences that is happening now is anything like an experience that ever happened before. And this doesn't take excessive questioning or intellectualizing. It's just natural. Wisdom arises with awareness and mindfulness. This moment is like this. What is happening right now? While this investigation happens, we're very present knowing, grounded in the body, grounded in the breath. Many things happening at once that awareness can see. Insight can arise.
noticing what's happening. If we wander, no shame, no blame, we just come back to our chosen object of awareness or to the container of the body in which we sit openly to notice what happens at any of the sense doors. The way we perceive the world through all of our sense doors. Experiencing reality through the lens of insight can have a profound effect on our life and practice and the way that we view the world. And it starts in the present moment. Holding ourselves gently, kindly, with compassion and being present. Easeful and natural. And as we hold ourselves in this precious container of our bodies, may we take a few moments to really nurture and feel a kindness for ourselves, a well-being for ourselves. We incline the heart-mind toward an openness of heart. Sometimes, sometimes things are difficult for us. We need to hold ourselves in compassion. With equanimity so that we don't fall into extremes. And we can nurture this gently and quietly, pushing ourselves to be free from harm, safe and protected. To be peaceful and tranquil. Sometimes just doing a little rocking in the body, a little movement in the body. The way a parent might rock a child. We take care of ourselves. May we take care of ourselves happily You might have phrases that you use. You can just hear my words as sound arriving at the ear and have your own phrases for holding yourself gently and kindly with equanimity. A kind of pure, unconditioned love, well-being. And setting ourselves aside for a few moments, we can call in a good friend. Someone for whom it's easy to feel kindness and compassion.
seeing this person happy and healthy, inclining our heart and mind toward their well-being, including in our container of kindness, that they have ease in their lives, be free from harm, safe and protected. It's an intention in the mind, an intention in the heart of including them in this fullness Seeing our friend happy and healthy and allowing karuna, compassion, to flow toward them. Wishing that they may treat themselves gently and have compassion for themselves when they are having difficulty. May there be equanimity and moments of joy that are recognized. And then allowing this kindness, setting the close friend aside, allowing it to include a teacher. Might be our third grade elementary teacher that we learned something from. Or it might be your first Dhamma teacher. It could be a child or an animal. Seeing this being happy and healthy. Letting kindness, the intention of kindness from our heart and mind to include them, wishing them to be free from harm, safe and protected, and may you have ease in your life. Nurturing this kindness and compassion in ourselves. Sharing it with the friend and the benefactor. We can gather this energy and share it with a neutral person. Someone we may have seen lately on the street if we were driving or walking. That we don't have a connection with or an opinion about. But knowing just as I wish to be happy, you also wish to be happy. This might be also a neutral group of people. It could be those healthcare workers still tirelessly giving their time to help with COVID. Or some of those who are suffering with COVID, or perhaps oppressed people struggling for justice, 
all over the world. May our kindness flow from our hearts to include them. May we have compassion. May they have compassion for themselves. May we tap into equanimity so that we don't fall into pity. Kindness, compassion, equanimity, joy. May there be moments of joy. moments of freedom from suffering and understanding that ability to be free happens in each moment. But we have kindness and compassion for those struggling. And gathering this energy from our heart and mind from ourselves, our friend, our benefactor, the neutral person, and letting it flow in all directions, to the north and to the east, to the south and to the west, to all beings everywhere, those that swim, fly, crawl, walk, those beings known and unknown, seen and unseen. May all beings everywhere have happiness and the causes of happiness. May they be free from suffering, inner and outer suffering. May we all know our true nature Anicca vata sankara upadavaya domino upakitava meruchanti te sam vapasamo sukho. All conditioned things are impermanent. They arise and pass away. And seeing this clearly with mindfulness brings the greatest happiness, which is peace. Before you open your eyes 